Welcome back, Remoters. I told you we were going to do our friend, Ferb. Last time we did Phineas, and now we're going to do his incredibly intelligent friend, Ferb. He doesn't talk much, but he's a smart one. So our friend is tall and skinny. We're going to want to turn our paper vertical. And our friends will be back together again. And as they say in Phineas and Ferbland, I know what we're going to do today. So you're going to need a pencil and an eraser. You're going to want to draw lightly because kind of like with our other friend, we're going to have to do a little bit of erasing even if we make zero mistakes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw his head, which is a big, long rectangle. And we're going to be erasing a lot of it, but it's probably the best way to start this. So you're going to start up near the top of your paper, not all the way at the top, because he's got a big poof of hair, just like his friend Phineas. And we're going to draw kind of a rectangle. So I'm going to start a little bit to the right of the center. And I'll draw a line that goes down. I need to leave a little bit of room. At the bottom, I'm going to try to do some of his shirt, just so he's not a floating head. So it's just slightly off to the right, and it's just slightly bent. The picture actually looks pretty straight. Mine's not straight, but that's fine. We're good. Now, it's actually, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Instead of doing a rectangle, I think we're going to do his eyes, and we'll kind of work our way down from there. Trust me, folks. Trust me. So right about here, just a little bit down from my line, I'm going to draw his first eye, and it's a circle. So I'm going to try to draw as close to a circle as I can. It's a nice big circle. Yeah, about close. It's close enough. It doesn't touch the side of the head, but it is pretty close. It's pretty close. Coming out of that is going to be his gigantic nose. And it's not at the bottom of a circle, his nose. But if we go up to the side just a little bit, we're nowhere near the middle of our circle. But we're just starting to come up the side. And I'm going to draw that up and down and over. Mm -hmm. There are no corners on my little rectangle. It's got a little bit of a curve. I might have made it too curvy. Maybe a little bit on the top. I made it too curvy. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. So, a line, a circle, and half of a rectangle. So far, piece of cake. So far, piece of cake. His second eye is actually bigger. Now, this is unusual. Usually, the eye that's on the other side is a little smaller. Just like on our friend, Phineas. His eye was a little bit smaller. And you can see here. Ferb's eye is bigger on the other side. I don't know why, it just is. So we're gonna draw what he actually looks like. So I'm gonna start up here. If this was a clock, about 10 or 11 o'clock. And I'm gonna make this big eye. I'm gonna come around and I'm, I'm gonna hit about halfway down my rectangle. There's my eye, there's the end of my nose. That's going to hit about halfway. Up here, up around, boom. Starts in one spot, finishes in another. Okay? His pupils, I'm going to put, he's kind of looking down. He's much taller than Phineas, so his pupils are usually down because he's looking down at his friend. So I'm going to move his pupil right about, looks like it's right about on that line. I said his friend. 
I think they're brothers, right? They're like stepbrothers or something? I'm not sure. One has an English accent and the other one doesn't. So either they're brothers or stepbrothers, I'm not sure. Now I'm gonna leave a little reflection in the top. You're not gonna color this in until you do it with a black marker, but I am because I have a black marker. And then the other pupil is just barely above the nose. And I'll leave a little reflection on that one too. I like to leave the reflection a little bigger because you can always color more in and leave less. If you leave a small little speck for a reflection, first of all, it's going to look like you just missed a spot, but you can't make it bigger. Once it's sharpied, it's sharpied. There's a reason why it says permanent marker on the pen. So you can always make it smaller if you don't like it, but you want to be able to see the reflection. Okay, so there's our eyes. Now I'm going to start, there is a little bit of that nose, and I'm going to go from the nose down, and in his mouth, it's quite interesting, it's just kind of like a, his mouth, he doesn't he talk a lot, so he's just kind of like, has like one lip, he sits and he's a good listener. And then I'm going to continue that big giant head of his. The bottom of the mouth, it looks like it goes in a little bit. So I'm going to just continue that in. It looks like he has a nose growing out of his neck. But it's not. It's a mouth. And at the bottom, he's a very well-dressed young man. So he's got a collared shirt. The collar goes just a little bit out further than his neck. And it's just kind of like down, up, down, up. And he's got a nice little button right there. I don't see any little buttonholes or anything. And then his shoulders, he's a very skin, skinny fellow. So he doesn't have too much in the way of shoulders. He's got skinny little arms. It's a sleeve. He's got a little skinny arm coming out of the sleeve. We draw the back of the sleeve so it looks like it's going up in. Same thing over here. Skinny arm coming out of the sleeve. And then we would color in, which you can do later. And we've got a little line there. That's about it for the shirt. And his hair is not that different from Phineas, but it is a little bit. It's still kind of like a palm tree. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start right about here. This part is off to the side a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of go down and touch my head, maybe go a little bit outside of it, and then come up kind of like a palm tree. Second one, we've got a couple smaller little spikes of hair sticking up on the back of his head. And as we come to the other side, our palm leaves get a little bit bigger. And then we've got a big, he's got a big swoop of hair that's going to be coming way out past his eye. Big swoop. So you're going to be a little bit to the left of his eye. And then it kind of swoops up over his head. And then we've got another little swoop of hair that kind of finishes up to the other side. And then we've got just a little bit of the head. So if we can imagine where this line is going to come up, I would say right about above that eye, but you'll have to measure where this line is. You can make it a little wider, but you don't want this line like way over here because it just wouldn't make sense. So instead of just centering it in the eye like I did, you'll have to kind of see where the bottom of your head would come up. His head is a little bit thinner than the top, but the top isn't a lot wider. It's just a little bit wider.
And the last time we made a fence with Phineas. So I suppose you can do the same thing with Ferb if you want. We'll cut him in the backyard, hanging, talking about their big master plan, what they're going to make. And you can do as much or little wood grain in the backyard fence as you want. Just give a little bit of a background. Uh, his skin is peach. Inside of his eyes are white. Reflections, of course, are white. His hair is a nice bright lime green. Right? Phineas is red hair. Ferb is lime green hair. White collar in his shirt. Looks like a yellow shirt. And of course, his little peachy arms. Okay. So now we've got the guys back together again. We've got Phineas and we've got Ferb. Ferb looks pretty good. Very nice. As always, if you need paper, let me know. I will roll it up. I'll put it down the front entrance for somebody to pick up for you. Or I can give it to somebody who's in school. I've done that um, a couple times this week. And they can bring you, deliver it right to you. If you have a neighbor who's in school, just let me know who it is. I'll go down, and I'm sure they'll be happy to bring it to you. That way you have paper. So you don't have to keep making your drawings on the small little 8.5 by 11 copy paper. It's very thin. You can't watercolor on it. You can't color it. Let's just say you wanted to color your friend in with marker instead of crayons or color pencils. Copy paper just doesn't really, it's not meant for coloring on. So if you need nice, big, heavy, strong paper, I've got it here. All you have to do is ask, okay? So until next time, we will see you later. Goodbye, remoters. I miss you.